All right, so we're doing this onboarding for Sidekick and I couldn't get it to download. And for some reason, my browser was getting warnings outside of my view about downloading it. So I did get the desktop app downloaded. Um, let's go through the guide or the installer as they call it. Not bad, normal stuff. Um, should go pretty quickly. Shouldn't get hung up on anything. You may hear chickens in the background. We're letting them roam around the yard today. So we'll see how that goes. The last minute is always the longest minute, I feel like. I'm gonna move this up here. So their goal is to minimize or eradicate tab clutter. Reduce the nasty tracking and security, let's say violations. Streamline app usage, especially web app usage. And I don't know if you heard that, but the installer is done. So let's see what happens. All right. So let's try this. Let's use Gmail. I don't really care if you guys know this email. Guys or gals, I should say. Close all Chrome windows. Oof, that's a big ask. Okay. Close Chrome. I broke my computer. Oh, there it goes. Okay, Chrome went away. Let's try again. Oof, this is a lot of a lot of just system permissions. I understand why. It's gonna try to replicate my Chrome experience a little bit better. Okay, so I'm gonna use Slack, Gmail, Loom, Zoom, Calendar, ChatGPT, not Simple Note, um, Figma. Maybe that's enough for now. Obviously, I use. Why did it turn things off? Oh, I was turning things off. That was done. Okay, there's feedback right there. It says choose which ones, and I guess I assume the color ones would be the ones I'm using, but I do not assume that I wanted all of those or I wouldn't. So now I have to go back through this. That, hmm. If you're asking me to choose, let me choose them. Otherwise, maybe say something like pick your favorites or connect to all your apps. Let's just, I can't even remember what I chose before. Let's say that's enough for now. I don't want it to start up yet. I don't know that I want it to be my default yet. I'm gonna keep growing. Probably shouldn't ask me that twice within 10 seconds. Well, let's extend this out so we can see what it looks like on full screen. Okay, sidebar. And your most used apps are here. To add a new app, click on the plus icon, use shortcuts. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So if I want to go Slack, I can command one. Or is it shift one? 
What just happened? I forget what that sign is. Option one. Option two. No. Okay, it's not gonna let me do that while it's telling me this. Allow notifications. Allow twice, really? Multi-account apps. So Gmail, for example. Right click on the app. Let's say this. Add account. Try this out just to see how this functionality works. Ooh, so it's a pro feature. So I'm not going to be able to do that right now. Darn. Um, let's see, does it want to move my face? Sessions, you can group your tabs for a work assignment. Okay, so it's not really letting me experience the product the way I want to right now. It keeps redirecting me to other things. Um, Let's see, this is going to be kind of like my tab browser, which I'm kind of getting tired of my tab browser because I keep losing data. So let's see. Add a new session. Let's call it uh, personal work. Okay, so if I go here, this is my active session and I get my tabs. So let's say I want to go to Coda, for example. Should have me log in. Now I wonder if I can actually set Coda up as an app. Okay, so I can access all my things here. Um, wonder if I can add Coda here. Yeah. Okay, so that's just going to basically give me, when I'm in the app view, it'll take me there instead of having to navigate all these things. And then I'm, I can click and drag. I can sign in to Slack. I don't usually use Slack in the browser. That is one thing I do like having in a desktop app, but I'll play with this later. Probably put Gmail at the top, move calendar close to it, and play around with this. Okay. So now the trend is telling me about collections, smart shareable vaults for important files and bookmarks. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. I don't really want to do that because I don't use bookmarks that way. That's in. Ah, no. No, I don't want to do that. So I have local bookmarks, then I have this personal folder. Drag and drop. Hmm. So could I do like this, maybe? No? Add a link from websites or sidekick search bar. Drag and drop. So where is the sidekick search bar? Does anybody see a search bar? It's still in Coda. Okay. Search is where? Well, that's still Coda. Task tracker. Okay. Man, this is rough. Um, there's a lot of things to learn, and I don't feel like I'm getting a chance to really learn them. It's mentioning features that it hasn't introduced me to yet. Um, and there's no familiar UI elements for me to find a search bar. Maybe if I open a new tab? Yeah, here's a search bar. Is that the way to do it? So what if I look for Fig Jam? I don't think I've been in there. There we go. 
So it'll actually, so it did import my browsing history. It'll let me find the things that are in my browsing history a little bit easier. Uh, let's see. See if I type the words in the wrong order though, I hate when search apps can't find that. Um, let's see if I can just call notes, meeting notes, anything like that. There we go. Okay, at least it found it. So it's using my history pretty well to access those things. Install Sidekick, I did that. Try productive features. Tab switcher with tab, no, no, that's tabbing across the page. Shift tab, no, control tab. Oh, that was kind of cool. Look at that. Okay, that's kind of neat. Then I don't have to read and find it. That's actually pretty cool. Okay. Split view mode, shift B, oh, control B. Uh, organize your tabs by sessions. Well, let's see about split view mode. So if I go like this, why is it not? Prior, okay. So option tab worked for sh your tab switcher, right? You decided, oh, it's this thing. Okay, maybe it's because I'm on a wide screen, but also if I am paying attention as a user over here, where all these things are, I'm not gonna notice something all the way over here to explain the feature I wanted. Split view. Why didn't it split it with the thing that I already had in focus? Clicking this icon. Okay. What icon? Where did it go? <laughs> what happened here? Okay, it's still not... It's still not working for me. Now none of my shortcuts are working, gosh darn it. Okay, if I can control tab, it'll open it. And then if I control B, what? And then there's an the icon I was supposed to, this tab. Coda docs with Coda docs. And can I drag and control the split? No, whoa, okay. How do I control how wide? There we go. Okay, this is nice for a widescreen. It just took a minute to figure out. So how do I change this one? So this will turn split view off. If I want to turn it on, I can choose a tab or an app. So say I wanted Slack. And what if I switch that? Oh, it'll switch one of them. Okay, that's cool. Move my face again. This is feeling really rambly, but if we're being honest, this isn't really a smooth onboarding experience. Okay, probably shouldn't show the security code, but by the time you see it, it will be used and gone, huh? Why is it launching the wrong one? Uh, Slack in my browser. That's what we want to do right here. It's refreshing my desktop app now, which is great. So how do I then... Uh, I don't know how to switch workspaces on my desktop app, or my browser app. So, oh, here we go. Usually it recognizes which ones I have. Okay, so this is kind of a pain to set up, but that's actually on Slack and not on Sidekick. So let's get back to the task list that it wants me to do. Productive features, I tried them. Focus mode, Command Shift F. So 
So that takes tabs out of play entirely and some of the other features and that. So now I'm just in an app focus mode, I guess. And I guess tasks is a feature of Sidekick. I don't know if it is treated like an app in terms of the functionality. So if I go back, oh, okay. And there is a magnifying glass up here I finally found. Yes, global search, which is control F, yeah. And it's giving me shortcuts. I love, I'll say this, because I gotta put some praise in here too, I love it when a search function lets you do, it helps you do tasks and it helps you find information. Most of them tend to default to finding information or content. Um, not many of them help you remember how to find out how to do a task or how to do a task very efficiently. So I'm actually a huge fan of this because, okay, they're gonna make me, why isn't it? Well, because the search bar is open, which is, okay, it's opening it. <laughs> Gosh darn it. I was trying to give them some kudos here. <laughs> Now I can't even remember how to go back to the focus mode thing. Maybe I can exit focus mode. No. Okay. How do I go back? Okay. It was option shift something, something. Okay. Now I'm out of focus mode. So go back to this. And where are we at in the tour? I'm totally lost from the tour that I was on. I don't know if I finished it. Okay, so split mode. I got email here. The pro version will let me switch to a different account so I can check that, which I would absolutely have to have. Um, Interesting. So I would say this is kind of like superhuman and I'll do one of these as superhuman. I would say this is maybe better than superhuman or more applicable, applicable to me. Superhuman has this onboarding where they teach you a lot um, and there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts and efficiencies to gain. So at least I go into that assuming that I'm gonna have to learn something in practice to make it worth my time. This one, I would say I like the design I like the functionality of the app and they've done some nice things. There's a lot of feature bloat in this already. Um, yes, power users will probably like take advantage of some of these things, but I would love to hear from the product team about what percentage of their users are actually leveraging all of these things. Like why put a task management app inside this if it's core purpose is to integrate with apps, right? Why Why do some of the things that, I, I can't even remember what all I just went through if we're being honest about it. Um, split screen is nice. I love that. I love doing it on the iPad, but iPad is small. So when I'm on an airplane and I try to do that, it's usually so I can take notes while I'm reading something um, or work on documentation. Split screen is nice for similar purposes, but I feel like if the objective is focus and then somebody starts split screening Slack and something else, the focus goes out the window. So I do think there's some cases where um, maybe they're allowing users to sabotage themselves based on the, the selling point of the outcome, right? Uh, this is neat how they, I don't even know how they got me in here at this point, but um, it was one of those split screen tasks or something like that where they are introducing some recommendations and some good content that's focused on the main mission that I'm on. Um, and it's their content, so I like that. Now, what, what help are they gonna show? Okay, help is nice. Learning Center, what's new? Feedback, Discord, get productive. Okay, so I actually like this. 
Um, probably because I'm a product person. I don't know how many normal users will like this, but get productive. Import data from another browser. I already did that. Okay. Ooh, why did it close that whole view? Split view for apps and tabs. Did that. Add multiple accounts to an app. I did that, but it's a pro feature. Um, which is good for activation. Right click on any app to add an account, access its recent history, or configure its settings. So I think I've done that. Did it log me into ChatGPT? Oh, why did it split my screen three ways? Gosh darn it, I didn't want to do that. I don't like, I don't know if you all saw that, but there's a placeholder. I right clicked on it, it just says ChatGPT account. So it made me think it was going to log in based on me being logged in my other browser or maybe some other voodoo. Wow, that was interesting. Yeah, they don't know. Okay, that's fine. Um, back to this. Wait, no, I didn't customize an app. Right click to add an account, access recent history, or configure its settings. So if I log into this, recently used account payment. This is maybe a chat GPT shortcoming, but it'd be sweet if my recent chats were in there so I could access stuff on the fly. This feature is actually super helpful. So for me to go in and say like, hey Coda, which doc was I working on recently? In Coda, I'm still not logged in, but I was logged in. So I guess it's starting my, um, starting my history a little bit backwards, or I guess it's starting from scratch with certain apps. Let's call that done. Man, okay, this wizard, is multiple times now I've had issues where the buttons are just not responsive, right? I guess it says it's done. I can't undo it. Um, we said search was there. Command F was working before. Is it? Uh, it's it's command. Yeah, it's not control. I wish there was some consistency there, and I also don't know where that icon came from. You see, if I close this, they're not there. If I open it or I hover over it, those are there, which feels a little odd. That's fine. Judgment-free zone, I guess, for that. Mark is done. That and that animation is like really fast. I didn't even realize what happened. Um, and then we said shift tab, no, control tab. Figma, so that's nice. Sidekick, cool. Mark is done. So we've gone through getting started, great. We have focus and discipline, organize tabs by sessions. So that would be like if I'm working on a project and I have data out, I have a doc out, I have um, some kind of research or competitors open or something like that. I could have a session specifically for that. And in theory, I would close that session when I'm done working on that thing, maybe, or save it for coming back for a different or related project. Um, full screen focus we tried, it made me nervous. Mute notifications, block all distractions, what is that? And then secret features become available when you try all features above. That's kind of a fun way to gamify this. What does get things done say? Integrate your calendar. Sidebar, turn on integration with calendar, receive. Okay. Add blocker, appearance, account. Dot, where's the calendar? That's easier. Whoa. 
Some wild stuff down here. It's that one. That's cool. I'll probably upload a different one later. Um, tab switcher. That's already activated. Tab suspender. Yeah, it'll just keep on from refreshing constantly, which is fine. It'll keep my computer from blowing up. Ooh. Okay, what if I click try? Integrations, okay. I'm already signed into Google, darn it. I guess it has to reauthorize. So I know this video is getting long, but this is a pretty complex product and I did want to get through these extra tasks. And this is, this is a rule of thumb for me. If I just did this and it fired successfully, they know I added a calendar. They got an event on the back end that said I added a calendar. Just mark it as done, please. Uh, I don't really want to try a task timer. Add a task in collections and tasks. Set a Pomodoro timer. Okay. I don't remember how to get to collections and tasks. So let's see. You know what? Let's just let's just search. Oops. No. Nope. Nope. Where's the search bar? I think it was Command F. Yeah. What the hell? No, I don't want Notion tasks. I want... Hmm. Okay, is there a shortcut for collections and tasks? Okay, I don't want help. I want navigation, darn it. Collections and tasks. Okay, this lined list. Oh, I don't, I mean, Pomodoro timers, I know you're supposed to set a certain amount of time. D defaulting to 25 minutes. The start and stop. Okay, what if I want to change, if I want to do 15, or what if I want an hour long session? Uh, what just happened? Stop. Market is complete. Okay, I could see myself maybe, especially if there's some kind of automation, which let's see. Let's go to Zapier. Oops, I don't know what all that is. Uh, let's log in. Boom. Put my face over here again. Let's see if there is a sidekick. No. No. Oof. Okay. Well, so if I'm using Coda for tasks, it would be nice if it knew which tasks I was using. Otherwise, I'll just use Coda or I can shift into this. Maybe I'll integrate it, maybe I won't. Honestly, this is not really even worth my time to consider. But overall, I think if we're being honest, it's a pretty cool browser. It has some feature bloat. The onboarding experience is rough for a couple reasons. One, because the wizard is broken in some ways. The the clicking slash focus slash um, actions on some of the buttons freeze up. The way the wizard is organized where you have it telling you one thing on the left side of the screen and something pops up on the right side of the screen is a great way to confuse people and let them miss some of the actual steps that they're supposed to be taking. And the pacing for the user to discover this stuff is not natural at all. So when I actually tried to use the features, I was getting stopped and interrupted by the onboarding wizard. 
which I really don't like. And if you go back to um, Spark Toro, which is one I did the other day, they actually had you walk through a task and do something, like actually understand how something works before they introduce the next thing. And yeah, you can always skip some of these things, but this experience was pretty rough for me overall. Is it a product I'm excited about? Yes. Would that onboarding experience scare me off? And has it scared me off? Potentially. I don't know that I'm gonna make more time in this week to try to get this app rolling for me. Um, in a world where I'm paying 10 to 20 bucks a month for a bunch of different services, I don't know that I need to add one more if I already have a system that's working. Um, that being said, I'd be willing to try it for a few months and see if I actually have any productivity gains and I feel more organized and less scattered from it. So hopefully you all at least see what the experience looks like and can onboard a little bit smoother based on seeing me stumble through. Um, let me know if I missed anything, if I got anything wrong, if you have any other input um, and I'll keep going on some of these.